And inward is where where it can be found. The light in the mind that, that the false beliefs and the concepts and the constructs have covered over is uh, is where happiness is, is where um, love is. But in a sense, it's the direction. It's that outward, inward. Not mm -hmm. looking outward to the projections, to the idols to uh, complete me. So removing the obstacles to that love is removing those constructs from my mind. Or disidentifying from those constructs. Okay. Yeah. It's recognizing that they are just constructs. Yeah. In a sense, there's nothing to remove. It's just recognizing yeah. that that's, that's all they are. And like you say, not identifying with them. Disregarding them. It's not a destroying process here. Mm -hmm. This isn't a process of destroying the false or destroying the evil. It's a matter of, of not being fooled, not believing that the false is true, not believing that the unreal is real. You know, the, uh, it's a truth is a it's a recognition, but you have to be able to look and and identify the false as false before you can experience that recognition. It's really a sorting out of thoughts mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit is is helping the mind with, and the false thoughts are, are no longer valued and are no longer invested in and since they fade. Because mm -hmm. they're recognized for what they are. Yes. So life just becomes one big holy encounter in the sense of um, there's nothing it's an inward direction of uh, of how how to step out of the maze of time and space, the the inner voice, the intuition, the Holy Spirit keeps um, guiding, and guiding the mind to let go of uh, the limited constructs, a sorting out of of uh, the false from the true, or helping the mind to stay at the mind level, to not raise the body thoughts, the world thoughts, the attack thoughts, to the level of mind. To see a projection as a projection. The way the um, projection goes, it just seems to be um, like in a hall of mirrors, if you look, put two mirrors back to back and you look in and you can just seem to see the, the images of person looking in a mirror, just fragmented and split, and it just seems to go on and on and on, teenier and teenier and teenier as it splits, and and um, in a sense that's that's the way that the mind deceives itself. Um, a good example uh, would be television. I mean, there's a we could take a particular topic like television where um, the mind has projected out. A world, the ego has projected out a world, and now the mind, the deceived mind, believes it's a person in a world. And then it events and, and continues. The projection continues to fragment and splinter in the sense that that then we have this so-called so invention of in the projected world of television, which then mirrors images and. And then we have, it seems like, the image watching more images and so on and so forth, when it's, it's simply the fragmentation of images. It seems the multiplicity of the world as, as more images are produced and, and um, television and advertising and distribution of products and more variety and more things to, to see and do and everything is just the, the multiplication of images when, in fact, that's all just part of the construct, that things aren't getting worse in the world. Things aren't getting better in the world. The world is the world. That, that there's a way of, of seeing the entire world as a fabric, 
of, of not ordering the thoughts and not judging, that literally um, releases the mind from from its belief in littleness. And in that sense, um, you know, television is just a, a neutral in the sense that it can be used by the mind, um, by the Holy Spirit or the trained mind to help um, just see the false as false and to not um, buy into particular images and so on and so forth. To the untrained mind, you know, this, this, um, these images reinforce the belief in separation and fragmentation in the mind. So to the untrained mind, the um, television, the learning continues. The, the perceptions that the mind sees and the fragmentation and the things it sees just are reinforced as being real. The belief continues to be reinforced as, as being real. So oftentimes for a child, it seems, can learn from watching um, television, many, many, many hours of, of television, and uh, actually it's just that the, the projections are, are reinforcing, the images are reinforcing the beliefs in the mind. So that it can be very helpful to, uh, to uh, either take time with a child to talk about what does that mean to you, and, and really start to to speak and to use the the dialogue, the conversation, and whatever is on the screen as a as a teaching learning device to, to talk about the, the meaning that that is given and to get into a discussion of, of values and to use it as a way to get into questions of deeper um, deeper levels of the mind. That's when the Holy Spirit is um, at work, as it were to use the images as part of training the mind to greater discernment mm -hmm. and sorting out of the true from the false. And it's also where it can be helpful that if, if um, one doesn't have a lot of time to take to, take to sit down and talk with a child who's watching to, um, to uh, very carefully select um, programs that that uh, are reinforcing um, more helpful values or mm -hmm. to limit um, television in that sense when, when it's unsupervised or there's no one to really discuss and, and go into the, the different meanings and everything. So as these are, once again, that would be a case of, uh, of taking it down to a presenting problem which for a lot of people, television is is a, something in an area, an arena, a part of their life that, that they really have some questions about. You know, it can it can seem to be very seductive, sitting there and watching these images, and it seems to present a picture of of reality. Um, once again, it ha it has nothing to do with the reality in the ultimate sense but it can be used as a symbol by the Holy Spirit to undo the false concepts. Mm -hmm. As well as, as it, it can be used by the ego as a purpose of, of reinforcing the beliefs in fragmentation. Victim, victimizer, and the ego can be very drawn to uh, competition, to battles, fights, you know, so on and so forth because that, that reinforces the belief in competition. Seen aright or seen differently, the, the same images are simply seen as a call for help. You know, or, just, or in the ultimate sense, are seen as unreal. So to the trained mind, uh, it can be used as a tool for release. The intention in my mind it's what is it for, for me? You know, what if I'm trying to get something from it? What what is it that that makes me value this program over that program? Um, you know, 
And that gets back to thinking that there's something to be gotten, right? Yeah. That I'm, that I'm not already whole and complete and yeah. full. The discerning between the Holy Spirit and the ego's purpose, I mean, when you were talking about the body identification, obviously, um, you know, you could break it into many different ways and levels in the world in the sense of fashion, in the sense of, um, you know, physique, um, training the body um, to look to a more uh, standardized form of beauty, accepted beauty, um, weight loss, um, just on and on and on and on. The important thing is is to get at the at the purpose. The ego's purpose is a focus on the body because the the body is the chosen home. You know it. it it tells the mind, you know, this is your home, now the body, and, and even though the body is not a, a very good home for the, for the mind in the sense that it's fallible and it breaks down and so on and so forth, the ego, you know, wants to emphasize the form identity because that's what protects it in the mind, the belief, that's what protects the belief in separation, is the form identification, that's the substitute. So, therefore, you could look at the intention. I mean, it, it comes down to um, pulling it back away from um, thinking that you can see the ego in anything or anywhere. I mean, some people might say, well, a shopping mall, you know, <laughs> with all the emphasis on the form and the body and the, the clothing, the convenience, and all the different services made available to the body is like the temple of the ego, and you could use that metaphorically, but, but ultimately remember that the desires for the things of the world are, are in the mind. Not in the shopping mall. Not in the shopping <laughs> mall. That's, that's, once again, it's back to that level, mm -hmm. getting past the level confusion, but there are altars in the old sense of like having a temple with an altar, and a very holy place, altars are like devotions. And what the mind is devoted to re really says it all. I mean, it's it's coming back and seeing past the ego's tricks, and 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 withdrawing the devotions from the ego.